We are taping right now just after seven o'clock with Mayor India Kincannon with the city of Knoxville. Mayor, we so appreciate your time in what has been a busy and hectic week. If you look back over just the last four or five days, how do you sum it up? Well, it's been an incredibly busy time and the city of Knoxville is used to responding to emergencies. This is uh, an unusual level A pandemic is not something that we've experienced in our lifetime, but uh, we are prepared and the city of Knoxville is on the job. At this moment, I think a lot of people would be curious about how your days have changed. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a sense of what you're doing in the morning and the mm -hmm. afternoon and the evening to make sure that you're doing all you can? Well, for one, both for my meetings and for everybody in the city, we're practicing social distancing, just like you and I are right now. Uh, we are not having any meetings with more than 10 people. Um, and we're just sort of following the guidelines that we are asking people to follow throughout the city. Uh, so obviously, if you have any feelings of sickness, asking people to stay home and that sort of thing. The day-to-day -day busyness is uh, most everything that's normal business uh, that we're working on has taken a back burner. And we start every morning with a meeting with my senior leaders to discuss how we're responding to COVID-19, how we're uh, working with community partners to meet social service needs, um, what we're doing to take care of our own employees and just constantly updating and working on that and, and communicating to the public because uh, the public does want to know what's going on and how they can be involved and how they can protect themselves and their families. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of that is uh, through you. You're leading by example uh, on social media, showing people you can be outside, but also keeping the distance that you and I are keeping. Absolutely. You know, our parks are still open, but our rec centers are closed. So that's the kind of thing we want to encourage people, if they can stay home, to stay home, um, to go out only on necessary things like to shop for food or to go to their jobs if they are not in a job. A lot of people have jobs that don't enable them to work from home. So, uh, but otherwise, we're uh, asking people to keep that distance, but it's still okay to go out, walk your dog, uh, take a hike, enjoy our city parks. Um, and even talk to people as long as you're just six feet apart. Mayor, uh, you declared a state of emergency earlier this week, which is unprecedented, at least in recent history. We haven't seen that happen before. For people who are curious about what that does for your powers, mm -hmm. let's get into some of the details about what that allows you to do as mayor. Right, well, the, the main reason I decided that we needed to declare a state of emergency was to give the city the flexibility to respond to needs as they arise in a very quick, nimble fashion. Uh, so that's why we did it. And I obviously spoke to the members of city council before proceeding and uh, they were all fully in support of that. So, um, and now if something arises and when we need to, uh, you know, buy masks for our first responders and, and we need a, a big expenditure for that, uh, we can just go ahead and do it and we don't have to wait two weeks and, and go through uh, a lot of extra approvals. So um, that's why we did it. And, and now we're ready to act as needed all in the interest of preserving the public health, and that's that's how we're going to proceed. Public health and safety is absolutely your top priority, and, and like you said, that allows you some flexibility with the budget, and it's my understanding that you could also uh, ask or order uh, businesses to close, which, which hasn't been necessary yet, at least in the hour that we're talking. Right, we have not imposed, we've basically been strongly urging businesses to close. We've urged uh, restaurants to move to takeout only and many, many have, and I think that's a really good public-minded thing. Uh, we have asked uh, people to uh, stay home and, 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 a lot, and we've um, encouraged uh, churches and other groups to go to online services or some other kinds of ways to be the church out in the community serving people who can't get out to buy their own groceries. And, and so many have stepped up and done that. Um, you know, big retailers, Westtown Mall decided to close through the end of the month. So the people are stepping up uh, just through this guidance and strong urging. And, and I'm really pleased and proud of that. And I know the people of Knoxville are going to continue to step up and do what's right for the public health. I want to build on that a little bit. Uh, just from your personal observations and what you're hearing from police, fire, and also mm -hmm. the parks, um, it appears that uh, people are really listening and taking heed in this city. Is that fair? I think many people are. I'm, uh, I think that we still need to continue to urge compliance. A lot of people uh, think that because they're healthy that they don't need to stay home. 
But the truth of the matter is you can be uh, ha carrying the coronavirus and have no symptoms at all and then transmit it to people who may be able, may get it and have a more severe case. So that's why we're encouraging everyone to stay home if they can, to practice social distancing, even if you're young and, uh, and have no uh, other underlying health conditions that make you more vulnerable. Think of the people, everyone knows someone who's undergoing cancer treatment, who has lung disease, who's older, or who is otherwise vulnerable. And, and young people can contract this too. It may not lead to a, mort a mortal illness, but it can lead to serious illness. So practice that social distancing. Um, you can go outside, you can enjoy being outside and walking dogs and even talking to people, just maintain that six feet of distance. I'd like to move to the economy um, because there are, are so many question marks with what's happening right now. And I know that a city is really only as healthy as, as its businesses. Um, yeah. And what can you say about your conversations with business leaders, wh mm -hmm. whether they're in the hotel business or whether in the restaurant and bar business or anything else? Well, I know it is a really difficult time. A lot of events have been canceled and that's really hurt our hospitality industry. Um, and now a lot of people who are practicing the social distancing aren't going out as much. So it's a huge hit to our economy and I have a lot of sympathy for people whose incomes depend on wages and uh, tips and other things from this industry. So uh, ye yesterday we had a conference call with Governor Lee um, and I know he is working on budget amendments to uh, you know, to aid small business owners and the people they employ, uh, wage earners, bartenders, waitresses, all those people who have a severe loss of income. So um, I'm, I also heard from our national leaders in Washington that they are going to uh, invest more in unemployment benefits and get money to people right now when it really matters. So I'm really encouraged by that conversation and, and hope that it comes to you know pass in the very near future because we need it in our local economy. There is no question that this is not just our problem, it's everyone's problem. Yeah. And so in some ways that helps insulate us in, in at least mindset wise. Um, when we talk about the economy and pushing the pause button, um, in, in Knoxville, how, how long can we push the pause button? Is that weeks uh, before we, we start to things, see things wholly shift? Mm -hmm. Is it months? What's your sense from the experts you've talked to? Well, the experts I've talked to say that if we respond really well as a community, and really flatten the curve so we aren't overstressing our hospitals and healthcare workers, that the, like the time to act is now and to be aggressive in acting and staying home and avoiding contact with other people. And then you know, people, the, the economic impact may be really severe, but be a matter of weeks rather than months. So uh, no one knows exactly what the economic impact is gonna be. It's definitely not easy. And you know, I'm committed to working with our state and national leaders to alleviate that as things unfold. But acting now can not only save lives, but it can lessen the impact on the economy. Let's move to health. And uh, I have some questions about that. And one analogy I've heard, Mayor, and I'm curious your impressions of it is, it's as if we may be standing on a beach and we, we can almost see this wave in the distance um, and it's building, we mm -hmm. know that. We just don't know how big it's going to be when it hits our shores. Right. Um, do you think that's a fair analogy and, and speaking mm -hmm. to some of the things that you talked about, how we're trying to lessen uh -huh. it? Yeah, I actually, I think that's an excellent analogy. And I think that the benefit that we have in Knoxville is that it has hit other parts of the world before us. Uh, obviously, it started in Asia and has spread to Europe. And now uh, it's, it hit you know, Seattle and New York, but it, it's now come to Tennessee. We've had uh, one confirmed case in Knox County. There's several in, in Hamilton County, a lot in Davidson County and Shelby County. And uh, the virus does not know boundaries. And, and it's going to be coming to Knox County, but we have the benefit of advance notice. So uh, the experts I've talked to, including Dr. Buchanan at the Knox County Health Department, they understand that you know, uh, when you stay home and avoid, you know, practice social distancing, that can flatten the curve. And, and all the public health professionals I've spoken to talk about flattening the curve because I, we have a good healthcare system. It's just that they can't have everybody all at once. And so if we can flatten that curve by, by taking these measures that are hard, they're not easy, but the alternatives are much worse. 
One of the things that we've had a lot of questions about this week is we are in spring break for Knox County mm -hmm. schools and for many surrounding schools. And there are concerns expressed at least to, to Dr. Buchanan and other health leaders. What happens when those people who are on the beaches of South Carolina or in Florida or in some other part of the world mm -hmm. come back home? Um, it, her most recent guidance is what on that? Should those people think about self quarantine mm -hmm. for X number of days? Well, I just spoke to Dr. Buchanan about this today, and she said, first, for anybody who has a question, they should call 215-5555. That's a special hotline just for Knox County Health Department questions, and in particular, uh, encouraging people who came back from other, any place outside of Knox County may have had a lot more incidents. If you were in Florida, if you were in Texas, if you, if you were in Nashville or New York City, they have had more serious, more confirmed uh, cases, and people may be carriers, even though they're asymptomatic. So I encourage everyone to follow what Dr. Buchanan advised and call the health department, and they can give you specific advice based on your specific circumstances. But, but that is a big challenge. People have been traveling, and when they come back, uh, we want them to follow the most cautious advice of the health department. You are the leader of our first responders. Our police, firefighters, and medical professionals are on the front lines of this, preparing for this. We heard from some of them today. What are you hearing from them that is encouraging and what are their concerns? Well, I'm in frequent communication with Chief Sharp and Chief Thomas of KPD and, and the fire department, and they are professional responders to emergencies. So they are acting uh, according to the plans they already have in place. I know the police department has already gone to what they call level one, where they now are conducting their roll calls uh, outside uh, and they are um, prioritizing welfare calls for senior citizens. Um, and also they're working with the dis dispatch to make sure when people call to report an emergency that the dispatchers are asking, do you have a fever? Do you think that you might be sick with coronavirus? So then if they get that information, when the firefighters respond or when the police respond, they have protective gear. And so it's really important that our first responders don't get sick because they can't take a day off. They need to be on the call 24-7, 365 days a year, whether we have a pandemic or not. So we are making sure that they have the equipment they need, gloves, really high quality air masks, um, and you know, hand sanitizer and other, other gear that they need to protect themselves. Is there anything that we can do as citizens to support them in this time of crisis? Well, I would encourage you to go to the City of Knoxville website, which has a bunch of resources for how people can help, because lots of people want to help. Mm -hmm. And this is a way you can help uh, with our first responders, our, our medical professionals, and also um, people out in the community through United Way. Uh, and other entities are coordinating you know, food for children. And, and kudos to our Knox County Schools for making really quick arrangements to feed everybody who might not uh, otherwise be able to eat now that schools are going to be closed for several weeks. So. So um, go to the knoxvilletn.gov and there's a special website that gives ways for people to get involved. You are uh, the mayor of this city and not uh, on the school board anymore, but you served on the school board, yeah. uh, chaired it at one point in the county. And I, I just want to ask you, I know that's not your purview mm -hmm. now as mayor, but for uh, parents um, looking for some reassurances about uh, the school system and how it will weather this crisis, what can you offer them? Well, I was uh, on the school board for 10 years and, and both my children uh, have been in Knox County schools their whole lives. I still have a, a high school student and our teachers and the leaders in our school system are, are second to none. They work incredibly hard, not just to educate our kids, but they care about their welfare and their health. And they're already making plans for how to support them educationally and socially uh, during this time where they can't actually be in school. So I have great confidence in our teachers and I know that uh, our school system is gonna work and, and the city and county and many, many other community partners are there to help uh, as we deal with these interruptions. So uh, I think they're gonna get it done. Mayor, uh, lastly, uh, you talk about your personal connection to this. Both your daughters are home. Mm -hmm. um, you have a husband, you're uh, a dog mom as well. <laughs> uh, could you just speak to the emotions of this as a leader in this community, but also a human being? Right. Well, 
It is a big challenge, and, and there's some uncertainty, but I feel very confident. I know, you know UT has acted very responsibly. Uh, my husband's a professor at UT. He's preparing uh, to teach uh, remotely, and, and I think the university has handled that really, really well. Um, and also, you know, my children, like so many, sometimes are already experiencing frustration that they can't hang out with their friends, but they understand that this is temporary, and there's never been a better time to uh, stay at home. We have good weather, so you can be outside. We have, you know, uh, most people have op access to uh, online resources and entertainment, and uh, you can even Skype and FaceTime with people in ways that uh, have never been able to do before. So we, we are challenged, but I think Knoxville, my family, and I know the people of Knoxville are up for the challenge, and also up for helping their neighbors, because not everybody um, has the same uh, economic stability as other, other people. So as we go through this, helping each other, checking in on neighbors, offering to help our medical professionals and our first responders with whatever they need. Maybe it's uh, help shopping for groceries, maybe it's help with childcare. Uh, I'm really uh, pleased and encouraged by the community's response to this, and I know we're gonna get through this. Mayor Kincannon, is there anything else that I haven't asked you that you think is important to point out about what we're facing over the next hours, days, and weeks, perhaps months? Well, I think the biggest thing is that uh, a little bit of um, inconvenience and discomfort and even economic pain now, if we really work hard at it now as a community, can save lives and can reduce the long-term economic impact. So I would encourage everyone to work with their employers to uh, make sure that they can you know, take care of themselves and their families, and I'm trying to do that for the city of Knoxville employees. Um, and wash your hands, wash your hands some more, and stay home if you can. Mayor Kincannon, we appreciate your help and your guidance through this, and thank you for taking time. My pleasure, thank you for having me, and thanks for covering this.